Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Meng Chang. I'm the John A. Everson Dean of College of Engineering at Purdue University. And my sincere apologies that uh, I was uh, eagerly looking for 151 East Ohio Street. <laughs> and I assure you, uh, to all the Hoosiers here, there is no 151 <laughs> East Ohio Street. Uh, it is 151 uh, West Ohio Street. And thank you, Bill. Uh, AT&T and other private sector partners is essential to the launch of the Indy 5G Zone. Thank you so much. We're looking forward to great partnership. Thank you, Jim, Dave. It's good to be back home here in Indiana because we get to work with leaders like you, working together to create knowledge and create jobs together. And thank you, Sean and Colonel Pittman, who's uh, in a very secure facility, I understand, right now, uh, for the tireless work with 912 to make this from a hope to a reality today. It's a big day for you, congratulations. And to all my Boilermaker friends out here, especially uh, research assistant professor, Dr. Kim over there, Quantac is the fiercest leader uh, from uh, uh, the research dimension working hand in hand with Sean here. And to those who are here right now, six feet apart from each other, wearing masks and those who might be watching real time or later on YouTube, that uh, some of you know that I got back to the beautiful state of Indiana yesterday. Uh, and prior to that, I spent 12 months serving the country as the science and technology advisor to the sector of state, Pompeo. And I have to tell you, it was quite a year. It was the honor of my life to serve the United States in this capacity, especially to serve on the team led by the visionary leader, Secretary Pompeo. What a remarkable leader, a remarkable individual. And thanks to Secretary Pompeo and Under Secretary Keith Kroc, who is another Boilermaker engineer, and many others at the US Department of State, we were able to advocate for tech diplomacy for this country. And is trusted technology partners around the world were able to turn the tide of 5G around this year for the lands of the free. And we were able to elevate digital technology, 5G AI semiconductor for this country. So we're very proud that the work that we've been doing in Washington, DC, but truly throughout this country and Secretary Pompeo's trip back January this year to the Silicon Valley, for example, working very closely with the private sector and throughout the world, including many of our wonderful partners in the EU member states. We spent a lot of time working with them on 5G this year, with Swedish and Finnish friends, South Korean friends, who are providing a lot of the gears on the radio side for 5G, very proud of the partnership. And we together really turned the tide around to advance technology for freedom. And 5G is something that you cannot really touch, but you know when it's there and you know when you don't have it. That's when the Netflix stopped working for you uh, and your kids start screaming. Uh, and we know that even when it's 3G. In fact, my office in Washington, D.C., in the State Department, it's very poor coverage. Uh, and I'm not blaming, blaming anybody. I'm not saying who's provider there, who's the equipment vendor, but very poor coverage. So it's not even those who are in our rural community and they deserve, Jim, as you said, the digital rights to work and to learn today. But also it's truly throughout the country. And with innovations that's gonna happen right here in the Indy 5G zone, will make that happen faster than ever before. And when 5G is here, you may not notice it in the consumer electronics, but those who are in industrial settings will notice it. And as Bill just mentioned, it is higher speed, it is lower latency, it is more massive scale of Internet of Things. And that means it's not just the better Netflix streaming speed, because at some point you say, as a consumer, 
my eyes can no longer process more pixels given the screen size, but it is for enterprise and industrial settings. It will transform everything that will have a network in it, from autonomy in our cars to smart cities, such as Indianapolis, to digital agriculture throughout this and many other states, to advanced manufacturing using autonomy and AI and requiring their own edge or fog network on site. So the big promise of 5G, even though you cannot touch it, is in the air, literally in the air, in whatever electromagnetic spectrum, is that it's going to transform through embedded industrial applications. And I know that Indy is speedy, and the Indy 5G zone is not too far away from the Indy 500 tracks, where you can hear the rooms directly in your ears, and this time you're going to, well, see it uh, in the electromagnetic spectrum, not the visible part, but you will feel it. Indy is speedy because there are smart actions taken by private enterprises and the creativity of innovators, entrepreneurs, but also by, as mentioned, the legislators and the governors. And Governor Holcomb, who continued to make this state such a business-friendly state, Congresswoman Susan Brooks, uh, who will continue to serve through the rest of her fantastic term. She was once a co-chair of the Congressional 5G Caucus. And of course, Governor Pence, and prior to that, Governor Daniels, who of course is my boss again now. <laughs> uh, and, and I'm not saying this just because he's again my boss, but truly, Governor Daniels, during his time, was able to deregulate small cells deployment. And that I heard from FCC commissioners played a big role in AT&T and Verizon's decisions to put Indy on the map. It's to say that when we have those millimeter wave, 5G plus, super fast, we also need smaller cells. That means we have more cells. Right? They will be healthy. They must be vetted. But the time and cost it takes to vet many more small cells got to come down. And Governor Daniels was able to accomplish that. That laid the groundwork a decade later for us to be on the leading edge of 5G globally. So I'm urging all the entrepreneurs out there, whether you are somewhere in the Midwest or maybe anywhere in the world, in this country, to consider coming to Indianapolis, to consider to come here to Indy 5G Zone, right here, 151 West uh, <laughs> Ohio Street, uh, in the beautiful downtown of Indianapolis, to try out your software, your killer app, and your embedded industrial applications, whatever that might be, because right here you get the best commercial 5G coverage, and you get this 5G zone. So this zone, well, there are three meanings to that, right? At the outermost definition geographically is this part of downtown where we got beautiful AT&T coverage and other coverages such as Verizon and other providers. And then you've got this building here where you have the ability to try out new things and you need to make sure that your killer app works here in all providers 5G networks and you can do that right here in Indy. I think there's one more city today that can get you that but it's in a very hot state so you don't want to go there in winter I mean in summer so and um, then within that it is what you're gonna see today there is a demo lab and then there is an open 5G test bed you're gonna see the demo lab today and the 5G test bed in partnership with AT&T and all the providers behind you is going to be ready in days time, right around Christmas 2020. And in the reconfigurable space of this test bed, you can try out new techniques. You can say, hey, if you change this parameter, Huang, what can I get, right? Can I get better TCP throughput if you change this physical layer parameter? Well, if you understand what I just said, 
uh, I uh, highly encourage you to go to uh, Purdue Global online and get another degree in engineering from Purdue. Uh, so let me switch my hat a little bit. All right, take off my hat of the deanship at Purdue Engineering, the largest top 10 engineering college in the United States, and put on my professor hat, and I prepared some slides for the next 43 hours. Uh, uh, well, actually, just for three more minutes, Sean's like, ah, Moon, stop, stop. Indy is speedy. You got to be speedy, too. So, uh, very briefly, 5G is going to be more open, more heterogeneous, and more edgy. It's going to be more open because we'll have more open interfaces across the functional modules we engineers call layers, as well as geographically across different base stations. And these open network architectures will accelerate innovation further. I'm proud to say that this is probably the first open in the air and open to everybody else, open architecture 5G zone in the country. It will be more heterogeneous. You will see private and public networks, industrial and consumer networks, unlicensed band and licensed band and satellite band networks working all together. There will be the cloud providers, the network providers, different equipment vendors, and all those killer apps that will truly derive the value add out of 5G that 4G LTE Advanced cannot give you. It will also be more edgy. A lot of the actions will come here. Well, you know, Jim can say this better than I do, but that NEC Mac, that uh, mobile or multi-access edge compute, so it happens to edge computers near and dear to my heart for many, many years. Uh, edge compute is going to do a lot of those AI embed right here, right now, so that it can do stream mining, hopefully respecting your privacy of the data and all that, without having to go back to the cloud back and forth. What does that mean? That means that it is much shorter time, which means you can actually put in some control of the physical objects like the car because it's much shorter round trip time, much faster responsive reaction. And that's what allow you to put the cyber, the bytes with the physical, that's the atoms. So it will be more edgy as more functions come to the edge of the network. We're proud to say the demo lab and the 5G testbed will be again among the first of these truly real life edge compute test beds available for entrepreneurs, innovators, and researchers throughout the country. So please come here to Indianapolis. And when we zoom back, and I'm sure that years later we'll look back and say, you know, on that day, December 17th, 2020, a bunch of nerds got together uh, and they talked about, you know, edgy and heterogeneous and more open. Uh, and here we are in year 2025, and indeed, uh, thanks to those nerds, we got this work. We got this work first here in Indianapolis, thanks to the Indy 5G Zone. Thank you so much for all those people, colleagues, who put countless, countless number of hours to make this a reality, despite the challenges we face uh, as a nation this year. And the beautiful India Speedy is not a slogan anymore, but a reality, thanks to all of you. Great to be here back home in Indiana. Thank you so much.